The last learning objective of this module is network analysis and geocoding. So a network consists of nodes and edges. The nodes are the points and edges are the links that connect those points or those nodes. Um, and in a way, the spatial model behind it is vector model. So typical network um, is represented by a point data, which are the nodes, and a polyline data, which are the links between those nodes. These two layers combined will create a, a network data set. Um, and uh, the network data models are very useful to represent many real-life situations. For example, transportation network, which you see here, where the nodes are the intersections and lines are the road roads that connect those intersections. Um, here's an example of stream network, where streams uh, form the, the lines and wherever they join another stream or the confluence of two streams is a node. Um, and other examples in urban environment would be a, a sewerage network, um, the internet communication network, all of these are examples of network and they require special analysis in GIS um, and they're a very important part of learning GIS. Um, so what can we do with network analysis? Once you know the lines and points, there are many types of questions that you can answer. Um, the attributes of lines could be how, how long is it? What's the distance between two nodes? Or it could be how long it will take you to go from point A to point B. Or it could be uh, what's the cost of traveling that distance. So many ways you can associate a number with a link and then once you have that number you can translate into it into spatial analysis. For example, what is the shortest route to a destination? You come across with this kind of question all the time when we are using Google Maps to find our uh, way through the city. What is the service area of an ambulance reachable within th three minutes? So all of the houses that an ambulance can reach in three minutes from its um, station uh, would be an, a question for network analysis. Um, what is the most suitable spot for coffee shop that can be reached within five minutes of walk from business centers? Again, a network analysis type of question. In ArcMap, there's a toolbox called Network Analyst that provides all of these functionalities um, and more to answer these kind of questions. And there are primarily three types of problems that we can solve with Network Analyst. Route selection, as I mentioned earlier, like least cost path. Service area, you know, how to, where to allocate resources. And then traffic modeling. And all of these three problems as depicted in, in these figures are candidates that can be solved using network analyst. In this module, I'll talk about least cost path. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting problem and it's probably the most complicated one as well. And what, what does that mean is, what is the shortest distance between two nodes? Um, each, each link has a cost. For example, here the link BE will cost us six units to go from B to E. So a path will be a combination of links. For example, if I'm trying to go from A to F, um, I can have a path A, D, F. I can have a path A, D, B, E, F. And each path will have its cost, total cost, which will be the sum of the cost that I have for each link. So going from A to D to F will be seven, whereas going from A to D to B to E to F will be 3 plus 1 plus 6 plus 1, 11. And the least cost path is an algorithm that finds the shortest, or, or not shortest, but the smallest cost path from a source to a destination. For example, if this was the problem that we, are, we want to go from this home to the graduation cap, what will be the path that would we have to follow so that the sum of the cost is the minimum? And of course, for this small network, you may be able to spend five minutes and solve it manually. But if it's a network for the whole city, then the things can become complicated and you need 
automatic algorithms that can be programmed in a computer uh, for these kind of analysis. And the one that I'm going to talk about is called uh, Dijkstra's algorithm uh, to find the minimum uh, cost of a path. And it's a very simple basic algorithm. It has two steps. So suppose we, this is our problem. We are trying to go from home to the graduation cap. And for this purpose, we'll call home H and graduation cap G. And all the other nodes are already named A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, there are two types of nodes that are identified in this algorithm. The first one is the node that has not been visited. And the other one, the node has that has been visited. So yellow color is for the nodes that have been visited. So if we are at home right now, so we have already visited this one. Um, and all the other ones are blue that are not visited yet. So going from home to home costs us zero. And going from home to anywhere else at this point costs us infinite amount of money or infinite amount of uh, whatever the cost is. Um, the yellow cannot be any further improved. It is zero, it will stay zero. But the blue one, as we try to find our path, we may come up with a better number for the blue uh, background nodes. And that's kind of the algorithm. So initially, we say that at home, we have cost zero, and it will take us infinite to go anywhere else. And with that initial setup, we follow two steps in the algorithm. The first one is, from our current node, can we do better to go to the next node? So we update these distances with our neighboring nodes. And then we go to the next node, whichever is the cheapest to get to. And then we repeat that process. The only thing that we have to keep track of is how much did it cost and where did we come from? So cost from the starting point, if, if we see a number 3B somewhere, that will mean that it cost us three to come from home to this point, and our previous node was B. We jumped from B to this point. So let's try this. Um, here's a table of initial setup. So home has been visited already. It is our cur current node, and these are all the potential next nodes where we can go, and right now everything will cost us infinite to get to. Let's apply the two steps of the algorithm at the node H. So if we are at a node H and we compare, we, we try to go to A, we, we can see that it will cost us three units to get to A. Well, this is better than infinity that we already knew. So we can cancel infinity and put three H here. Three means at node A, it will get a, cost us three to get to, and our previous node is H, which is the home. Let's apply the same thing at B. It will cost us two units at B, so we can update infinity with two H, and go ahead and figure out C on your own. With these three done, the, the first step is done. We have updated the nodes that are neighboring to home with new costs. And the second step is, well, which one is the cheapest cost? The cheapest one to go to? Well, that one would be B. 3, 2, 5, so 2 is the smallest number. So our next no node from home where we jump is B. And we do the same thing in the table as well. We update the table. So A, B, and C have been updated. Everything else remains the same. And then our current node now is B because we moved from H to B. And note that B's background has become yellow because now B has been visited. And all the other remaining nodes are all possible nodes where we can go next. Now we repeat the same algorithm again for node B. From node B, where we already took two units to get to, now this blue, uh, this green knight indicates where we are, we can go to E or we can go to D. Everything else remains the same. So if we go from B to D, it'll cost us two plus one, three units. And the subscript B means that we just came from B. And if we go to E, it will cost us two plus six, eight units. And B subscript indicates we, we just came from B. And our previous values here were infinity. 
So clearly we can we are doing a better job than infinity so we can update these numbers and guess where should we jump from B next? 3 or 8? So 3 is the smaller number we jump to D so D will be our next node. We update the table accordingly so from B we update our uh, neighbors C and D uh, sorry, not C and D, uh, we, uh, D and E. We update our neighbors D and E and everything else just remains the same. And our next node is D. Let's repeat the process at node D. From D we can go to A or we can go to F. So again, um, if we want to go from D to A, we have, it cost us 3 to get here, 3 plus 3 is 6. Are we doing a better job coming to A from this way versus what we already know? Well, not really. We already know that we can get to A by three units just jumping directly from H. So we will not update 3H. On this side, on the other hand, we can do a better job than infinity. So again, we update our table for D. We have updated the only F. 3 does not need an update and our new node will be A. So from A we can again figure out all these distances and we if you look at A we can't go anywhere all of these are visited so we jump to the next lowest one which is C 5H and from 5H if we look at 5H we cannot go back but we can only go to E that's the only option we have and it will be 5 uh, plus 2, 7. So we already have 8 here, which we discovered from this path. So clearly, we can update this with 7 subscript C. So let's do that, 7C, and everything else remains the same. Now go ahead and repeat this process on your own. I hope that um, you can do this. At the end, you will get a table like this uh, after you reach all the way to G. And this, is, this table can be used to find the shortest path anywhere from home. Suppose we are trying to get to G, so we kind of go backwards. To get to G, we have to come from F. Uh, to, to, to get to G, we have to come from F, and it will cost us 9 units from home. But to get to F, we have to come from D, which cost us 7 units. To get to D, we have to come from B. To get to B, we have come from H, which is our home. So this path kind of shows us now what should we do. So H to B to D to F to G. And that will be the total cost of nine um, units. Oh, no, sorry, not two plus one, three plus four, uh, seven and two nine nine units cost. Um, let's do another example. Let's say we're trying to get to E. So to get to E, we have to come from C with seven units. To get to C, we have to come from H with five units. So that would be the least cost path. And I hope this example kind of shows you, um, gives you the taste of the algorithms that are used at the back end to find shortest uh, or least cost paths and in particular short distance paths on Google Maps. So the next thing we're going to talk about briefly is geocoding. It's kind of an extension of network analysis and what geocoding does it's a process of spatially referencing um, points based on their address. So suppose this house number is 301 and this house number is 359 then what is the house number here? It's kind of the guesswork that we're going to do. And it's not really the house number we are interested in. We are more interested in the coordinates of this house number. If we know the house, if we know the coordinates at this intersection and this intersection, and you give me the address of your house, can I identify the coordinates of your house? And it's a simple interpolation. So um, if we know from the distance from... Um, Let's say this was 301 and this is 359 and your house is 320, uh, 321. Then just simple interpolation can, which is shown in this equation, I, I, don't, I won't explain it. You, you, you already have seen it many times. 
will tell us that I am 0.34 or 34 percent of the total distance uh, from 301. And if I know the coordinates of 301, then I can determine the coordinates of 321 as shown in this equation. And this is how when you put an address in Google Maps and this is how it's able to put a pin exactly on your house it doesn't know exact coordinates of your house it just figures it out based upon the address and based upon the values that it already knows at the intersections.